<laughs> I'm looking here at a project that I developed, ooh, must be over, well over 10 years ago now. So it's a 60 foot uh, tower with a rotator and an A3S on the top. Uh, I'm gonna run through, I've got the pictures, I'm gonna run through how we did this. Give you some inspiration, you might quite like this. Obviously you'd need a very large backyard, but you could do this on, uh, like for a field day or something, you would just have to get all prepared. I'll show you what went wrong, what went right, and if I did it again, what I'd do next time. So let, let me show you some of the pictures. I started off with a plan, like all these things, you do need a plan. There are three scaffolding poles in the first one, you can see just above the first guy line. The second guy line up is at the middle of the next scaffolding pole. And then about three feet or one meter above the next join, I've got uh, the third and then the fourth uh, right at the top. And I calculated what guy lengths I'm gonna need. So I'm gonna give you a parts list in a minute and then and show you how we did this. Just to give you a little idea, I built a little base out of wood. I've still got that base and it's not rotted or anything. I coated it in a fiberglass, like a fiberglass, well, I, I kind of varnished it in fiberglass gel or whatever. That's in the field right now. I'll find a picture of it for you. Must be 12 years old, so something like that. I drilled out some little nylon spacers and, and I made some little, um, these, these are actually for the guy lines. These are a quarter inch, six mil aluminium blocks. We'll get to how we put this up in a minute. This is what I'd do differently next time, <laughs> as you'll see it. But substantial piece of kit, absolutely lovely. The base worked to treat. There's quite a lot of knots and carabiners and stuff like that. So let's, uh, let's get the pens out and uh, work out what we did here. Because to start the ball rolling, there's a little technique and you do need you could do it on sloping ground, but it would be a nightmare. You're on flat, wrap, flat ground. Okay, so let's uh, just leave this sitting there like that. There's another, oh, there's another good picture. There we are on there, look. Great picture, that. Looks simple, doesn't it, when it's up? But uh, it was a bit difficult to, to, to get it going. Let's just quickly run through the parts list, actually, and show you what uh, we bought. You can get uh, scaffolding connectors. And we used a swivel. You can see that swivel there, look. Um, that it literally is a swivel. But you don't need a swivel. You, you, I would, next time I did this, I'd get a... These are pennies, right? These don't cost a lot of money. None of this does, by the way. You could, you know, if you knew some people and did a bit of scrounging, you could probably build this for under $150, $200, $150, pounds, something like that. Uh, what is this? This is big. Um... Connectors to hold the poles together. By the way, these don't need to be heavy connectors, like very long or anything, because you, the whole thing's guide, right, when it's up. You, you'll see how we did it in a minute. It, so that's a, this is an outboard connector. They also do little inboard connectors. I've used both. That's fine. Uh, there's a little inboard connector. and You need a ton of poly rope, polypropylene, you know, lorry rope. Black would be nice. You can get black. It doesn't need to be expensive. There's plenty of um, plenty of strength in that, and we made some guys out of uh, quarter inch, six mil, inch and a half, forty mil angle iron. Get the angle grinder and uh, just drive it into a point. Drill a couple of holes. In fact, Terry, the guy I did this project with, he was a bit uh, paranoid. So what we did is we he had these made. Which is the same thing, all right? This is from a military um, military spec. He, 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 he had an old guy or a picture of a guy and we took it to him. It cost a blooming fortune to do that. But if you, if, if you can drill holes in steel, then you don't need to go fancy. Just, you know, $30, $40, 25 pounds, 30 euros would get you all your guy stakes. But we need four. So how did we do this? So the whole thing starts off is that you need to pace out or ideally measure from from the middle, right? And I'll 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 measure it like this. Uh, 
you need to measure exactly the same in every direction. All right. There's one. There's one here as well. Obviously, we can't we can't see that one right now. So you lay your ropes out and you get a scaffolding pole. By the way, I would go if you're going three scaffolding poles, I'd go the first one steel and the next two aluminium. We did it all in aluminium, but I mean, and it does work, but steel cheaper, it's very heavy, and you'll find there's quite a lot of weight <laughs> bearing down on this thing. So we lay the pole down, you just lay it down on its hinge, all right. And as you saw, I drilled out these things here and to stop them sliding up and down the pole, I tapped very small um, bolts, screwed them in. So that these, po these little poly things just sat on them with this sitting on the top. So with the first pole, and we'll draw the first pole, right? We'll just put it slightly offset. We just lay that on the ground. And then what we did is we connected with our with our rope and our guy line and we connected from this piece here to there we did the same here lying on the ground remember there then you get another one and you measure this third one put in red you, you connect it to the right place and measure it and come all the way to here but then put it back and just lay it on the ground and connect it to that guy point. So as you can imagine, when we now lift this up, it can't come anywhere, it can't come towards us any further because it's now these purple lines are coming up to here and that red line is also coming up to here as well. So while it is still lying on the ground, you might as well get got a different color. Then maybe a, a light blue. Oh, it's a nice pink one. The fourth guy line, you do the same. We measure it along, cut, cut, the, cut the line, connect it to the fourth, and just lay it down the pole to here and put it out of the way. So the first one is quite easy. You just manhandle the first one up into the air. Right? So up it comes to here. We take our purple, purpley pinky stuff, and put that, connect it to our guy line. So now when we undo the guy line, the thing will fall back down again. Now then, here's the trick. We then start building the antenna from this point. So we then lay the whole thing back on the ground. The pink line is now down just next to it. Everything else is connected. Now what we can do is get the fall, we need to erect the falling derrick. So that's the beginning of the mast. Now, some people call this a gin pole, but it's actually a falling derrick where we get the, we have to hold that in place now and do the same all over again. We attach this one to here. We attach this one to here. We also attach these two together. So as that one comes up, this one falls down. So the pink one, will now connect to this red. And as we come up, it'll stop. And it will hold there because the weight of this one will just hold it there. But now just guy the whole thing off. So you've got guys going from there to there, there to there, there to there, there to the top of the red one. And the top of the red one, if you make this a tiny bit shorter, tiny bit shorter, so it's sitting off the ground, you then got a little bit of spacing to put some tension on it. So it will connect to your guide point. Do I have a picture of the connection to the guide point? Probably something like this. That might be it there, actually. This was our falling derrick. And you can see if I just zoom in. There's the tension between the two. Look, everything else is connected. Right, you can probably tell from this picture what's going to happen next. The bit of paper isn't big enough. So then we connect the next one to the top. And we do the same all over again. We get our polypropylene rope. We connect. Can you see that up here? And we connect the top of that down to here. 
and we do it all over again. So as we pick it up, we're now picking up both, this camera can see it, I think. As we come up over there like, like this, we want the whole thing to come up. What you will find though, is that connecting the falling Derrick line between the top of this pole here and there gets more and more difficult. So then we have to release this line, drop that down so we can get to the line all the way. And now at the second uh, scaffold pole, lift this back up in the air again and then pull. And I used the tow bar actually, although I've got a picture of Terry actually pulling this for fun um, quite easily, but I used the tow bar um, and just gently, very, very slowly came up and now we've got a 40 foot tower. Then we repeated it all over again to get the 60 foot tower in. Right, so far so good. What you need to remember though, is that one, go and buy a hard hat. And I'll tell you why. When this was on the lying down, it's so easy to think that everything is stable uh, because we're about to do this, but you're now dismantling it. You've dismantled everything apart from the falling derrick part. And I undid this this one here, just forgot, and the whole thing just fell over like this, just fell over. So if Terry was walking there, he would have had a scaffolding pole on his head. So that's, that's what you need to be aware of. Now, I, th I think a picture is a thousand words and all that. And then I'll give you a funny story at the end of this. Is there anything we've missed? I've just gone through these stories. These are pictures. This is Terry just showing you how it, how it balances. Right, let me just talk about this falling derrick here, as you can see, because in a minute, this is gonna tilt over clockwise to, to our right. The reason we made it nine meters long is because we were 18 meters high and we felt that was, if we go back to the original diagram, we felt that nine meters would be a nice height. So we had a three meter. This here is three meters long and that's six meters long. So that's 20 feet, 21 feet, and this is 10, 11 feet. And we're just gonna put a crossbar in here to support this nine meters, you know, um, but it just needed more. There was far too much sag. And what was happening is that the crossbar, if, if I call it a crossbar, was pulling with the weight, the first scaffolding pole out of shape. So what would I do next time? I wouldn't bother with all that. If I, we did this again, I'll get the right picture. Uh, this bit here. I would have a single scaffolding pole out to here because it just added too much weight. And then the very top guy, once it was up, I would pull them out and move them to, so most of the guys would come down to about six meters, roughly where that hinge, that crossbar is. And then maybe the very top guy, once it's all out, I'll just move buy some more guy stakes and move it out. That was, at 60 feet, extremely stable. Very, very stable. You cut one line, nothing would happen. Cut two line, it might stay up as well. Any more than three lines, obviously, is you've probably got a bit of an issue. But you have to watch out because it's getting these first two working together. So everything is connected. Once you've got that, you can just keep building from there. And also this crossbar uh, business. Now, that went up so high that um, that I thought, well, if we can go 60 feet, why can't we go 80 feet, add another one? So, which we did. And uh, I'll just show you the scale of this. I mean, it's 60 feet is it's quite big, right to there, right? 18, 19 meters. I think that's a slightly better shot. Uh, but we added on the top of this another pole, more rope and everything else. It did go up, all right? 
you'll find that the top of the pole <sighs> trouble is with poly rope okay so what we found was the trouble is with poly rope is that the longer it is the more stretch you're going to get all right you might not get a lot five ten percent oh not that what are you going to get uh Oh, maybe, you know, 1%, 2%. But the point is, you've got some stretch at the very top. Now, we got it all the way to this point. It was just sitting on the ground. And we were comfortable. We got all four scaffolding poles up. And Terry just grabbed the falling derrick. He must have moved it about a foot. He said, oh, let's take it back down again. That released the tension everywhere. And to this day... I can't quite remember. Or rather, to this day, I can't piece together what happened. I, I just saw it all collapse like a big spiralling thing. The whole thing. Everything bent. Everything was scrap, right? Everything. Every pole. I've got one pole left, but there's, it's a, it must have been like the top one or something. It's got a slight cut. Literally, it just came down because it lost tension. So if I was going to do 80 feet, well, I wouldn't. We, we are in the wrong, we're in the wrong technology, right? I know one other person that's done 60 foot with three poles, and I said, if I did it again, the bottom pole would be steel, then I'd have aluminium, aluminium, and the aluminium falling derrick, because you want that fairly, fairly light. Steel's a bit too heavy. And also, when you've got this whole balance thing going on, um, I mean, twice, I seem to remember, we disconnected the wrong line, the thing fell over, but there we are. But 60 foot with a tribander, like an A3S or something else, is very effective because we're a wavelength off the ground, remember, at, on the 20 meter band. And a wavelength on the bat, on, on the on the, a wavelength above the ground on the 20 and a wavelength above the ground on the 20 meter band for a tribander is a lovely height. Okay? You could put a hex beam on it, actually, it'd be fantastic. Uh, if I was going to put this permanent, you could do. I would look at heavier duty Marstrand line. Now we do two mil and three mil. That's not enough. You need to go up. You just need a bit of density on the rope, okay? But Marstrand guy line would be the right thing because there's no stretch, no stretch at all on that, and you could build that permanently. You need to put a little circumference thing around it. We just used, you know, hazard tape. I think you can might be able to oh, just see it. Let's have a look, see if we can see the hazard tape. Well, just. And just to keep people away, you know, the circumference of the fall, all right? So in other words, if you, you know, you've got 60 foot that way, you need at least 60 foot that way. So you're looking at 120 feet uh, circumference, uh, diameter, 120 diameter, 60 foot radius. There we go. And then that way you're going to get some sort of safety margin. So if it falls down, it's not going to crash on your neighbor's shed or worse on your neighbor. A lot of fun though, isn't it? I hope you agree. We had a lot of fun. I hate it, but the collapse was a bit of a nightmare, to be honest. It might be. I don't think we had the bottle to take the pictures of the mess. And also the ropes were all tangled up and inside out and under poles and over poles. We just had to go and get knives cut everything away we've got a two or three bags we literally threw it all in scrapped the poles and left them for the scrap man so there we are lesson learned but we did use the 60 foot a couple of times and it worked really well okay next video is here and there's a really cool sort of binge watch uh playlist be below hope this has been a bit of fun for you i will see you next time and uh, i'll sign out all the best for now enjoy your radio bye bye